Hey everybody, I'm Sean Powers. I'm back to the Linux Plus course. And today we're looking at section 3.1.2, which is actually a subsection that I sort of made up. It's section 3.1, but uh, we've already looked at conditionals and we talked about some variable stuff. So we're gonna look at loops today. And loops are really, really important if you're gonna be on the command line for any amount of time. Basically a loop is a way that you can have the bash interpreter do something over and over and over so you don't have to. And unfortunately, uh, I usually do something over and over a few too many times before I start and, you know, go through the effort of writing a script. I'd like to say after like two or three times of typing the same command over, then I go into and make a for loop. But if I'm being honest, it's more like, oh, after I've typed the same thing a dozen times, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should have just made a loop to do all of this stuff. And it should it should really go quicker than, you know, 10 or 12 times. You should be able to write a loop really, really quickly. But it's okay if you don't remember the syntax. Because here's the deal. I personally can never remember the syntax for making like a for loop or a while or until loop. That's okay. I Google it every time. It's just I know how they work and what they do. And that's really what this video is about is to get you familiar with what you can accomplish with a loop in Bash. And of course, to prep you for the Linux Plus exam too. Uh, but the format uh, is something that you need to be familiar with. But like I said, it's okay if you don't really understand every or don't recall every bit of syntax perfectly every time. That's always going to be there for you to look up on Google. And on an exam, you're generally going to have um, uh, like an example or something to work from or multiple choice, and it's going to be familiar. So let's actually look and see how they're formed, what they do and why you might want to do one loop over another. First of all, the big secret that's not really a secret, a while loop and an until loop are basically the exact same thing. What they do is they test for a condition, and if the condition is true in a while loop, it'll keep doing it until the condition changes to false. And with an until loop, it's like uh, it will keep doing the loop until the condition is true. So as long as it's false, it'll do it. It's just like the opposite way of looking at something. And let me show you what I mean. So this is the syntax, like when you, you know, forget how the syntax goes and you Google it, this is what you're gonna get. Uh, it starts with while and then the condition. Now, we'll talk about conditions in a second, but the condition is like, if X is greater than five or something like that. And while the condition is true, it will do everything between do and done over and over. At the end of the first iteration of the loop, it'll check that condition again. If that condition is still true, in the case of a while loop, it will do it again and do it again, which means it is very possible and quite honestly easy to make a loop that goes on forever, an infinite loop. So if you don't have a condition that changes somewhere in that looped stuff, and it just keeps going forever and ever and ever, your loop will keep going forever and ever and ever, and you'll have to hit control C in order to break out of the loop, which isn't the end of the world. But you need to know that unless you change the condition in your looped stuff, it's always going to you know, evaluate the same unless something changes in your loop. So that's really important to understand. And again, while loops and until loops are basically the same thing. They're just looking at like, is it false or is it true, right? And so they function the same way. So over here, this is an until loop, and it, like I said, it's just opposite, right? So until the condition that you list here is true, it'll keep doing these things. And as soon as this condition is true, it will stop doing it and it'll go on with the rest. Whereas over here, uh, while the condition is true, it will keep looping until the condition is false. And once the condition is false, it will go past the done and execute whatever is below in the script. So what does that look like? Well, an actual script written out is going to look something like this. Of course, we've started with this line to signify that this is a bash script and whatever your default shell is, it should use bash to interpret the script below. And then uh, let me get rid of my face because it's going to be in the way there. Uh, first we have we set x equal to one. And then we say while, and then in these brackets here, we have dollar sign X, which we've learned is how we reference the X variable that we set here. So while dollar sign X is dash LT, and this means is less than the number 10, 
then do, and I've just indented these for readability sake. They don't actually have to be indented in the command line. This is, you know, bash is not a scripting language that uh, cares about white space or indentation or anything. This is just for readability. Uh, but we're going to echo the dollar sign X, which means we're going to echo the first iteration, the number one. And then here, this is how we increment the variable. This is how we change X so that when it tests it in the next loop, it tests it a little bit different. So it's saying X is equal to, and then this construct, dollar sign, parentheses, parentheses, uh, dollar sign X plus one. This is how we do arithmetic in Bash. And that's a little bit confusing, but this construct right here is how we iterate X to be X plus plus one. Now there's a couple other ways we can do that. As long as we have the double parentheses, we don't actually have to put the dollar sign in front of the variable. It can just be x equals, we put a dollar sign in front of the whole double par parenthetical arithmetic thing, and we can leave out the dollar sign in front of it, and we can just use uh, the variable name x plus one, or we could also do this, leave the dollar sign off the front, put it in uh, double parentheses and say x plus plus, which is kind of like the C language way of incrementing a variable. So Bash is flexible and allows us to do multiple things. And usually, like I said, I have to Google the darn thing every time, like how to increment uh, or how to iterate a variable in Bash. And I usually have to Google it because I always forget, like, do I put the dollar sign in front of the parentheses or inside? And if I put it on the outside, do I have to put it inside? And I usually just Google it. I'll be completely honest. And honestly, this is really easy to do. Let's make one right now. Let's do a VI. Let's make an until one. Since we demonstrated while, we'll do until. It's the same thing, but backwards, right? So uh, we'll do a VI until dot sh just to name it something and then we'll do there then bash and now let's set x is equal to one so that it looks familiar to what we were doing and uh we're gonna say until and since it's oh, it's going to run while it's false so we're gonna say until x is greater than so dash gt and there's a whole bunch of tests you can do but these are some of the ones you can do gt for greater than lt for less than uh le for less than equal to you know so th these comparisons thing are are pretty um robust in the things that you can do but uh until x i forgot to put the dollar sign so until dollar sign x is greater than 10 do and now it, it this is just my uh, vim indented automatically for me. I'm gonna say echo dollar sign X. And now we want to increment it, remember? So I'm gonna do it the simplest way possible. I'm gonna do uh, this and then X plus plus, close, oops, close that twice and now type done. So hopefully this makes sense. What we've done, X equals one. And so it starts out and uh, until one is greater than 10, well, no, it's not. So it's going to execute. It's going to say one, and then it's going to increment. So X is going to become two. It's going to go do another loop, and it's going to say until is two greater than 10. Well, no. So it's going to do it. It's going to print two. Hopefully. Let's see if that's what actually happens. I'm going to save this. I'm going to make it executable. And now let's execute it until SH. Ah, and that's exactly what happened. It went one, that first iteration. It kept adding, kept adding. And then the last iteration, uh, it had incremented, it printed 10 and then it added one to it. So then X was 11 and it went to that first thing. Let's go back. So after it did the last increments, the, it printed 10 and then it incremented it to 11. It came back up here and it said until 11 is greater than 10 and 11 is greater than 10. So then it just short circuited and it went to the rest of the script. Now our script is just done, so it exited. And that's how it works. Again, if we were using while, we would have to think backwards. We would have to say, okay, while it's true, I'm gonna do this. And then once it's false, it's not going to execute it. Now, as useful as they are, I have to admit, while loops and until loops are not the ones that I use the most often. Generally, I'll use something called a for loop. And a for loop is something that's used in like C programming languages too. Uh, but this is the kind of thing where it will iterate through items in a list instead of testing a condition like is this equal to this or is this greater than that uh, rather than testing for a condition it will iterate through a list of things now that list could be a wide variety of things it could be like 
um, files in a folder. It could be lines in a file. It could be um, numbers from, you know, 1 to 20 or something like that. And the format is different. But the thing to remember is rather than uh, the, the condition changing and testing that condition, you know, that variable changing and testing that variable for the, you know, whatever it's being tested for, it, it, it's not based on a test. It's based on an entire list. So you define that list and then it iterates through every item of the list until it's done. And the format looks like this. We have four and then X, the name of the variable, in, and then we put the list, like what is in the list that we're looking at. And then the format is very, very similar. In fact, exactly the same as the other things. We start with a do. Uh, again, this is just indented for readability sake. We do all the things in here and then done, and it will iterate all of this stuff between the do and the done for as many items as are in the list. And every time it goes through an item, it assigns uh, that list item to the variable, in this case, X, okay? So well, how we come up with a list of things, again, there's a wide variety of ways we can do that. We could put a number uh, like a range. So this is uh, braces, one dot dot 10 in braces. This is going to be the same as uh, brace expansion would give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So the, the list is going to be one through 10. Uh, we could do the documents in a folder just by specifying like tilde is our home directory, uh, documents, and then star is, uh, well, that's something we haven't learned yet, but you've probably done like star dot star. You're familiar with the idea of what we're talking about with, um, you know, all the items in the documents folder here. And then we could just type a list of things. We could say, um, 4x in 1, 3, 15, 26. Literally type them out on the line, and then, you know, it will do everything in between the do and the done uh, to x when it equals every, you know, each one of these items. And then lastly, we could, uh, for example, I didn't close the bracket there when I was typing it out. Oh, my face is in the way anyway. <laughs> um, uh, so, we could also do the list could be like cat a file, right? So the file.txt, let's say it has a list of fruits and vegetables, right? In the in the thing. Well, then we could every um, item in or every every line in that text file would be an item that would get iterated in that list. And so X would equal, you know, every one of those things in there. So this is a way, again, it doesn't check something, it just creates a list of items and then we'll assign it to that variable every iteration of the loop. And we'll, we're gonna demonstrate this just in a minute, but I did wanna show you, there is a way that you can format this that looks more like C++ or you know C language, and that is this method here. I just like there's all, you know, different ways that you can uh, increment a variable, like when we did while in two, you could do like the X plus plus inside double parentheses. Well, this is the same thing. You can create a for loop using this format. So for open parentheses, open parentheses, uh, the starting point, the test, and how it's incremented. And so if you look at this, this ends up being a lot like a while or until loop, but it's formatted in a way that for does it. And every item in the list is um, you know, X starts as zero, and as long as X is less than 10, it's going to do everything in the loop. So it's going to do, uh, X is gonna equal zero the first time, and then we've done X plus plus for the increment, you know, for the iteration, and so the next time it's gonna be X equals one, and it's gonna do that as long as X is less than 10. So it's gonna do that all the way through until X is equal to nine, it's gonna execute it when X equals nine. As soon as X is 10, it's not going to execute it. So we're never going to see X equal 10 uh, inside this loop. It's never gonna do something for 10 inside that loop. Hopefully that makes sense. This can be a little confusing, so you don't have to do it this way, uh, but this is just like a, a shortcut way of creating a for loop using C++ syntax. Again, Bash is so flexible sometimes to its own detriment. But let's look at a quick for loop and uh, then we'll be all done because you'll be all loopy. All right, so let's call it uh, 4.sh and do the same thing bin bash and now 4x in I'm just going to do a simple list like this and then do echo dollar sign x done and what this is going to do it's going to create this set right this is a, a set of items and it's going to iterate through this entire list of items and the first time x is going to be one and then x is going to be two and then four and then 77 and 993 
Okay, so it's not like it's incrementing it. It's just going to the next item in the list. And this is kind of the simplest way to make a list is literally just make a list there. So let's do this. We'll just execute it, make sure I got everything right. So chmod plus x, so it's executable. And sure enough, it printed one, two, and then four, 77, 993. Okay, now we can, again, that, that list can be all sorts of things. Uh, let's see what's in the folder here. So this is what's in the folder. All right, let's edit this file. Um, I'm still gonna do uh, numbers here at first. So dun, 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 dun. Um, for X in, let's do a range. Uh, let's do from four to uh, 12, all right? So this should do four and then five and then six and then seven as it iterates through that range. Sure enough, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 12. So that's, you know, that it made that set by using that range, that brace expansion into a range. And uh, let's get a little bit crazy here. Now let's do uh, four X in tilde. Now this is my home directory on this computer and we just looked at stuff. So what this should be is a list of the items that are, uh, you know, when you type LS, it's a list of the items in there. Let's see what happens. Is it going to echo the name uh, of the, of the file? What is it going to echo? Let's, let's find out. So save this. So it echoed the results of what the tilde is. And the tilde is home as powers. Okay, so let's edit this again. Now, if we did 4x in tilde forward slash star, this is going to make a list of all of the things inside my home folder instead of just uh, the list of my home folder name. So home as powers is the entire list of what tilde is. Tilde is my home directory. Uh, this should give us a list of all the things inside my home directory. So let's see what this does. And now it has done just that. It gave, it's, it's now just echoing the path of every item in my home directory. And that should make sense. We have home as powers 4.sh, which is this file that we just made. Snap is a folder that exists in there. If we type ls, we can see this is all the stuff in there. And it just gave the entire path, right? The, it gave the entire path name of all of the things in my folder. And then that's what it printed on the screen. Now, I know that there are some times when you're really going to have to understand syntax and you're gonna like have to be familiar with that. Like if you're taking an exam and they expect you to start from scratch, um, even if you have to do that, if you kind of have in your mind what it's supposed to look like and you type it out and it's like, oh, syntax error, you can usually figure out the syntax. Just remember, you know, that it's a, it tests a condition for a while and until, and it's a, a list of items in a for loop and then do and done everything in between do and done is executed during the loop as it goes through it. It's tougher to make an infinite loop with a for loop, not impossible, but tougher, but with while loops and until loops, um, if you don't increment things properly or you're not testing exactly right, you can get an infinite loop or it just keeps going over and over forever. In that case, just control C will get you out of it. And hopefully that kind of gives you an understanding of what loops do and why you might want to use them on the bash command line. Generally, if you're typing a command over and 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 over, uh, that's not really an efficient use of your time. And you can use a script and a loop to do that over and over for you because you can do more than just echo to the screen, right? You can use your creativity. You can execute a command inside every loop. And then you can use the variable name to, uh, you know, do all sorts of things. Like let's say you want to ping a list of IP addresses. You could uh, do a range with a for loop and use that that dollar sign X as the last octet in the IP address. And you could ping a whole bunch of different IP addresses uh, in a loop instead of typing each one out. So the the possibilities are endless. Loops are very, very, very useful. And if you want to learn more about using loops in my Bash course that I have, Bash course, Bash playlist, whatever it is on the YouTube channel here, I talk more about loops with more examples and more things you might want to do. So uh, where it's going to be over here somewhere, uh, check out my Bash course. Um, but for now, hopefully that helps. Remember to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I'll see you in the next video.